Do you want to learn how to plan out your SaaS application? In this video, that is exactly what I'm going to be going through how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best software engineer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be looking at the steps you need to take to plan out the first stages of your SaaS application. Don't forget, whilst you're watching this video, if you learn anything new or find anything useful, make sure to smash that like button as it shows me that this video was helpful to you and make sure that I'm going to create content just like it. So this is my process and what I'm going to be going through, but there are loads of other ways of planning and preparing for your SaaS application. This is also going to be a bit of an overview. If you need more details into a certain section, there is loads of information online from people who have a lot more experience going into a lot more detail. So obviously the first part of planning your SaaS solution is your idea. This idea can come from your personal experience. It might be a project that a client is requesting, or you may have observed that there is a bit of a gap in the market. With your idea, you can then start to generate an idea of who your ideal customer is. You should think about who they are, what positions do they hold in their company, if they have a company, are they a person on their own, where in the world are they, does that make a difference to you, and really try to narrow down the kind of user that you are looking for. If you're struggling to come up with an idea, you can start the other way around and start with a target market and then talk with those customers and try and find out what product you could develop to solve one of their pains. So now that you've got your idea, you need to validate that idea. So with me, the first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk with customers who identified in the first step and ask them about whether this idea I have is something they would actually use. Is it something that will benefit them or even is the pain that it's solving something they genuinely have? This is all about getting feedback as to whether your idea actually has a target market. If you want, you can take this one step further and actually set up a landing page where users can pre-order. And this is a really, really strong way of validating your idea because if there are people out there who are willing to put hard earned cash onto your idea, you know that there are going to be more people like that and that you are definitely gonna have paying customers in the future. The third step is to start doing a little bit more planning into how your product is going to work. This will involve starting with a set of user stories. These user stories can be as simple as, I want to be able to post a message to LinkedIn, or it can be a lot more complicated than that, going into really fine details such as, I want to be able to group posts together and schedule that post for a particular day of the week. On screen now, I've included a list of my user stories. And once you've got your list of user stories, you should go back to the previous step, contact a couple more of your prospective users and discuss those user stories with them. Are these features and the user stories something they want? and this is gonna be an iterative process. And to be honest, it will continue the whole way through your product development, where you have an idea, you find users that are going to be your target audience and find out whether that is a feature they want, 
take their feedback and use that to update, optimize, add or remove different user stories. Now that we have the list of our user stories, we want to start planning out our minimum viable product or MVP. This is the product in its absolute minimum state where it is actually useful. So take your user stories and order them in terms of absolute necessity. So in my case, I definitely need to be able to post to LinkedIn, but for example, I don't really need to be able to post images or videos for my initial version. Once you have this ordered list, go through and decide where your minimum viable product cutoff is and this should stay fixed. One problem that a lot of software has when it is being first developed is that they keep adding features before releasing the first version. This is often called scope creep or feature creep and it means that you never get your product out into the hands of real users so you don't get the feedback that you need. So now that we have our plan for our MVP, we can move on to drawing up an architecture that will accomplish the results needed for our MVP. And that is exactly what I'm gonna be covering in my next video. So thank you and I'll see you in that next video.